Namaste everyone. In the previous recording, I talked about the need for value-based education. And now I'm going to talk about vision for value-based education. And as we mentioned earlier, that in the International Conference on Human Values in Higher Education, we are going to have three panel discussions in parallel. One would be there on holistic value-based education. The other would be on holistic human health. And the third would be on addressing sustainable development goals at the root. Now, on the first day, we are talking about the need. And on the second day, we are going to talk about the vision for holistic value-based education. So what would be the vision for education? Basically, we go for education for about one third to one fourth of our lifetime, if you look at the records. And why is that? That is to transform our life. So there has to be a vision for transformation at the individual level. And that transformation is basically the consciousness development of a human being. So presently, we can evaluate our level of consciousness and see what is desirable. As a human being, we have three basic requirements to lead a fulfilling life. One is physical facilities with which I am able to fulfill the needs of the body. But we can of course see that in our life, more important than physical facilities relationships, because this is the point where we mostly enter into problems in our family, in our organization. And we can also see that most of the problems are owing to lack of relationship, not basically the physical facilities. So there is another basic requirement for a fulfilling life, and that is harmonious relationship. We can also see that we can have harmonious relationship only when we have the right understanding, because with right understanding, we are able to identify the naturally acceptable feelings in relationship, which are going to ensure mutual happiness. Similarly, with right understanding only, we are able to make out the need for physical facilities rightly, so that we can feel prosperous after fulfilling the need. And we can also enrich the nature in the process of production. So the third need is right understanding. And if you prioritize it, you can see that right understanding comes at the first priority in our life as a human being. The second priority is for relationship. And the third priority is for physical facility. Now, to ensure all the three is basically human consciousness. So we are human beings, but we need to develop ourselves transform our level of consciousness so that we are able to live with human consciousness. And this is one basic goal for undergoing education. So holistic development is essentially the transformation to human consciousness. And for this, it has to ensure right understanding every child, the capacity to live in relationship with every human being, and the capacity to identify the need for physical facilities rightly. And then acquire the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required so that it leads to the feeling of prosperity within. So at the individual level, this kind of transformation, this kind of development at the level of consciousness is required through education. And in light of this, you can also make an appraisal of the current scenario. If the education is totally skill biased, we are seldom ever going to ensure this kind of transformation. So this is one fundamental change that is required through education. Now, if you extend it to the societal level, so the three basic requirements that I talked about, right understanding in the human being, relationship with other human beings, and physical facility with the rest of nature gets further extended. So as a human being, I need to understand whatever exists. I want to understand myself. I want to understand my relative. I want to understand the rest of nature, which includes the soil, air, water, birds, animals, plants, trees, isn't it? And this is called having right understanding in totality. So you want to have the right understanding of all that exists, right from individual to the entire existence. When I'm able to ensure this kind of understanding, then I'm able to live with fulfilling relationship with every human being. Presently, our notion of family may be restricted only to three or four members in our family. But when we try to look at relationship at the level of feeling, I can see that every human being is a relative. And when I'm able to recognize the feelings rightly, able to fulfill the feelings rightly, I'm able to ensure justice in my every relationship. So if you extend this mutual happiness, it extends to undivided society. That is, I'm able to ensure mutually fulfilling relationship with every human being across the planet. Now again, identifying the need for physical facilities rightly, I'm able to ensure orderliness in my family. 
and the order in my family is a building block for universal human order. No longer I am trying to accumulate as much as possible, indulge as much as possible by exploiting the human beings, the rest of nature. Rather, I am trying to fulfill my needs in a mutually fulfilling manner. So at the societal level, this vision for human education goes to undivided society and universal human order. Now, when we look at the current state of society, we are able to see that this is not the current state. At the individual level, we can find so many psychological problems, distress, anxiety, stress, and people are not happy, largely. If you talk about the continuity of happiness, seldom we find people who can claim that, yes, I'm able to lead a happy life in continuity. Similarly, at the level of family, we can see that people are into accumulation of wealth. They seldom recognize the need for physical facilities rightly. So we're not able to see the prosperity in every family. We are also not able to see fearlessness in society because the right understanding of feeling in relationship is not there. And that's why we can see so much of exploitation, fear, these kinds of problems in the society. And at the level of nature, we can see that people are exploiting the nature. The rivers are drying out. The soil is becoming infertile. We have climate change. We have global warming. All those problems are there. And society, if it is in this pathetic state, certainly education has been responsible for it. So when we transform education, it not only transforms the human being, it transforms the society at large also. And if you are able to ensure right understanding in every human being, prosperity in every family, fearless in society, and mutual fulfillment, that is coexistence with the rest of nature, then it transforms the next generation through right education, right production methods, right distribution methods, isn't it? So whatever we do at the level of individual, gets transformed into society and it further enriches the next generation. So through human education, we are able to ensure personal transformation and through personal transformation, we are able to ensure societal transformation. Presently in this century, we can see that so many technological advancements have taken place. But at the same time, we can see how the whole humanity is facing the threat through wars, through violence, through uh, terrorism, isn't it? And if you just keep on working for sophisticating technology more and more, we are going to have more and more such problems. So it's really the need of the hour that we start working about how to make the education value-based. Unless the education is value-based, we are not able to solve the problems of the need. And we need to have a solution-centric approach in place of some problem-centric approach, isn't it? Now, when we try to work for such an education, then we have to decide the outcomes that we would be desiring through education, which can be called as common graduate attributes. So one graduate attribute would be that the student is able to have a holistic vision of life, not limited to just getting a good job or a good package or as many facilities as possible. No, a holistic vision which encompasses our family, our society, our health, everything, the rest of nature. Similarly, the second attribute would be that the student is able to exhibit socially responsible behavior okay, in place of dominating, exploiting the rest of the people. The other is able to accept them as one's relative and live with love and compassion for the society. Similarly, the student needs to ensure environmental responsible work. And through this kind of work, one is able to ensure that the needs of the family are fulfilled. So gently, one thing is that we are not able to recognize the needs rightly and then to fulfill them, assuming them to be unlimited, we might be exploiting the humanity, we might be exploiting the nature. So we need to have environmentally responsible work. Fourthly, the student needs to have ethical human conduct at all levels of living, in all dimensions of life. Next, the student needs to have the competence and capability to maintain health and hygiene. We can see how ensuring good health has become a challenge today because we are not having a holistic vision for health. We assume curing diseases to be health, which is not the case. To have health in a holistic sense, you not only have to work for the health of the body, we have to work for the health in our relationships, health within me in terms of happiness, health in the nature around. And finally, the student needs to have respect for excellence, that is merit and gratitude for all. So these are six 
common graduate attributes, the desirable outcomes for education for which we have been talking, so that the consciousness development is ensured through education. So if you look at the vision for holistic value-based education, so it has to ensure the consciousness development at the level of individual, societal development through consciousness development of the individual, and it has to fulfill the graduate attributes after coming out of this higher education, the child must have these many attributes. And we can also appreciate the efforts made by AICT, and we are really thankful to them that they have been sustaining and continuing this effort because of which we have been able to emphatically implement this in our country, India. And through this international conference, we want to take this message around the globe. So we invite all the institutions across the globe to be a part of the conference and take also part in the panel discussion where we'll get the chance to discuss all these issues. Thank you.